Hi Lions fans, uh, Chris Fagan here, um, ready to answer some of the questions that have been uh, sent in. Uh, the first question is what current line resembles the way you played your footy? Um, this is quite a difficult question to answer because I was never good enough to play AFL football so uh, uh, if I was to compare myself I suppose I'm a, I'm a little bit of a cross between Hugh McCluggage and Dane Zorko. Uh, which is a pretty good play to be honest, I'm nowhere near that good but I played on ball, got plenty of it, used it pretty well and uh, kicked quite a few goals in my career. The next question is, uh, hi Fags from Charlie Cameron, how am I supposed to answer that? That's the sort of idiotic thing that Charles Cameron would do and send in. As a coach do you ha have any pre-game rituals? Um, I, I probably do, I'm not much different to uh, uh, a player in a sense, um, I usually go out, my ritual starts on a, say the night before a game, I go out and have dinner with my wife Ursula um, and I continually look at the scores of other games on my phone while we're doing that, which annoys her a little bit. Um, and then uh, I usually get up the next morning, go for a long walk, think about the game, um, think about the things that might happen in the game, think about what I might say at the press conference if we lose. I never think about what we're going to say if we win, I've just got to be ready if we lose. Um, uh, have lunch at the same time, um, pretty much do everything the same on, on game day. So uh, yeah, I've, I've got rituals. I think um, it's part of performance is, uh, is having a ritual and a routine and that gets you ready, gets you ready to go. Uh, when I get to the ground, I usually get here three hours early, which is ridiculous, but I get sick of being at home. Uh, so I go to the ground, sit in the, in the coach's room and just go through my presentation uh, that I'm going to do before the game over and over and over and over again so that I've got it in my head. Um, and again, just look at the scores of the other games that might be going on. Um, and then eventually once the players arrive, all the nerves go away and we're ready for battle. But that's, uh, that's pretty much game day for me. That's probably too long an answer. Can you give me a game, folks? Cheers, Jimmy Dunstall. <laughs> it's pretty cheeky by the young fella. He's been here five seconds. He's actually a good uh, young player and we think he's going to um, you know, progress through the ranks pretty well. But um, um, one day, Jimmy, you'll get a game when you've earned it. Um, what book are the coaches currently reading? Um, it's a very deceptive question. Um, you obviously know that uh, whoever asked this question know that I give the coaches books to read. I think they actually hate me for it deep down. They, they smile and take it from me, but um, I'm not sure what they really think. But uh, this year's book is a book called Belonging by Owen Eastwood. Um, it's a very good book about how you bring a club together, how you have pe get people get a sense of purpose and, and uh, that sort of thing. It's a very good book. Um, and we'll have a, probably have a chat about it in a couple of weeks' time, I reckon, with the coaches. And it'll be interesting to see when I start asking questions how many of them have actually read the book. Which player would have been the most difficult teenager if he was your son? I think the person who sent this question in would, would know what the obvious answer is, who that person would be. It is clearly Mitch Robinson. 